Hello, my name is Chris and in this video we're going to go over the basic settings for the Sierra Chart Trading Platform. This is a trading software that is written in native C++ and it is a highly reliable and highly efficient trading platform and it offers a lot of customization capabilities. So that's why a lot of people use it. It's very highly regarded in the futures trading space as well as in the trading space in general. People use it for charting as well as trading. Some people use it for only charting and not trading. Generally, they're just known as a very trusted and reliable trading program and they've existed for quite a while. So let's get to it. In this video, we're going to talk about Sierra Chart. I'm going to go through all the settings windows with you guys. Only the ones I think are the most relevant because there's so many hidden features in this program that, you know, if we spent, we could literally spend an entire lifetime probably learning everything that it has to offer. But we're going to go over the very basic stuff. If you want to support this content, as this is a free tutorial, you can do so by clicking on the first link in the description and check out my stock broker, Interactive Brokers. I have an affiliate relationship with them because I have lots of tutorials regarding their software as well. So if you do find that this video helps you, all I ask is that you click on that link. You just have to click on it and check out the web page. And that's all. You don't even have to open an account. All right. First of all, you need to learn how to drive a Honda before you can drive a Lambo. So let's get it slowly. I mean, Ferrari, by the way, I don't like Lambo. Sierra chart is a desktop program and you can connect to different trading brokers and services through this platform. Right now I'm connected to one of their services, which is a trading evaluator service, which you can use as a demo account and set your own account balances and all that. So let's get started. I'm going to go through the settings windows with you one at a time. Right now I have a cryptocurrency symbol here on this chart. That's actually Dogecoin, a perpetual futures contract. And this data is provided, I'm pretty sure it's free with Sierra Chart, as long as you have a subscription to one of their service packages, anyone. They, you don't actually have to pay for the, the data because obviously crypto data is free. At least most of it is, pretty much all of it is. So I'm going to close this chart book, right? I'll just close it. So we have nothing. This is what Sierra Chart will look like when you have nothing there. So we'll go to File. And I'm going to show you the File and Edit menus first, and then we'll go over to the general settings and all that. So we'll keep it very basic. So normally when I open a chart, or a chart book, I start by finding a symbol. So I'll select find symbol here. And the find symbol menu is going to open this up and it's gonna show you the list of available symbols that you can open up a chart for or a symbol for uh, based on the trading service that you are connected to. So if you're connected to, for example, CQG or some other service that has different symbols, you might see different things here based on the trading service you're connected to. But in this case, I'm connected to Trading Evaluator, which is one of the Sierra chart uh, trading services. But this is pretty much exactly the same as if it was connected to SC Data All Services. Okay, so let's open up a, a symbol for the S&P 500 futures just to show. So I'll select Futures CME, and then I'll select the contract here. Now we have different choices for opening up a chart. We can open up a daily chart or longer. That's what a historical chart is. We can open up an intraday chart, which is anything below a one day time frame, or we can open up a trading DOM, which is just going to show you the bid and ask in real time trades. And we will not have any historical price data associated with the trading DOM. So I'm going to open up an intraday chart to show here. And you can also use this menu to change the chart symbol that's already on a chart that you have opened. So let's open up the intraday chart. Okay, so now I'll drag this over and you can see that the chart is loading the data there. And now we have a chart that is loaded. Okay, so here's our first chart and it has been loaded into Sierra chart. All right, so now that we have this chart here, I'm not gonna really do anything with it. I just wanted to show you that this is what happens when you open a chart. You can see at the top, we have chart book one because we didn't have any chart books open. A chart book is the file that is used to save your chart configurations in Sierra chart. So when you open up multiple charts and configure them in different ways, you go to file and then you save the chart book. So you click on save or save as, and you will be saving your chart book, which is essentially your chart configuration. And if you want to send your chart configurations to other people, you just send them these files, which is the .cht file extension. All right. So since we had no chart book, it gives us chart book one. So I'll select file and then save as. Now we can save this as something else if you want to give it a different name. So I'll just save it as YouTube test chart, for example. Now I'll save it and you can see at the top of the Sierra chart window, it has changed the chart book name to YouTube test chart. Okay, so now I'm going to select file close chart book because I want to close this chart book. And it will ask you if you want to save any changes that were made to it. Normally you select yes, but sometimes you may not want to save the changes. So just select what you want there. So 
Yes, in this case. Now we have no chart book open again. Okay, so let's open up a few more chart books. So just as an example, I'll open up this one called ES Tester. And the chart was last um, saved in the minimized state at the bottom, so I'm gonna maximize that. Okay, so here's an example of what is called a chart DOM in Sierra chart, which is basically a chart with trading enabled on it, and you can access a DOM like that. Now there's one setting here, first of all, I'm gonna show you this one, which if you ever run into a problem where you can see the data of your chart is ending at the starter end of the market, like for example, the data here ends at 4 p.m. and the chart is down here, um, and the market is now closed, it is 5 p.m. Eastern, that's because you have not enabled the full session on your chart, so you have to go up to chart, use evening full session. And now when I do that, the chart has to reload with the days that I have on it. And you can see now we have the data that we're missing. Okay, so that's one issue you might run into right there. All right, so going over the file and edit menu. So generally the file menu is for anything regarding opening and closing files in Sierra chart, kind of opening symbols, opening chart books, closing chart books, opening spreadsheets, opening the time and sales window for the chart, opening a market depth window for the chart, saving chart books, um, open the data trade service settings, although there's another way to get into this menu as well, connect or disconnect from the data feed, which is important if you're, where you can work offline in Sierra chart, like you can do market replays and stuff and be offline as long as you have the data that's been downloaded and you need to be online to download the data, of course, but once you have the data, you can perform market replays and all that offline. Okay, so the new instance feature, this is a little bit more advanced, but basically it allows you to open up another instance of the software so you can distribute processing load between your multiple instances. But this can also be used to copy trades from one instance to another through what's called their DTC server. Okay, there's a few other things here. They have their own little chat window uh, that you can contact other Sierra chart users. All right, and that's gonna pretty much cover the file window right here, the basics of it. Um, the edit menu pretty much has a lot of settings regarding working with the data files for your chart. Um, so if you ever run into problems with the intraday data files, you can probably fix them here. Um, although I wouldn't recommend tinkering around too much with this. Um, you can see, for example, edit download data for the intraday chart. You can delete all of your data for your intraday chart. If you ever run into like a corrupted chart book or something is wrong with your chart book, you can just go ahead and delete all the data and download it. However, I would not recommend doing this, especially if you're downloading like hundreds of days worth of data. It might take you a couple minutes to download all that data. Again, especially if it's tick by tick data. One of the advantages of Sierra chart is that it offers you to go back and download tick by tick data for you know a really long time. Okay, so again, reload and recalculate. This is a command that you use quite often. Um, sometimes if you're debugging something and you need the chart to update, you can press reload and recalculate, um, which is essentially going to recalculate all the studies on the chart and you know reload the data to the most recent thing. Okay, this setting right here is very important, which is translate symbols to current service, which if you go ahead and tinker around changing your trading service around a lot, like if you go from SC data all services to Teton order routing to trading evaluator service, like if you're changing the connection of what Sierra chart is connected to, then you're probably gonna have to learn about this setting right here, which is translate symbols to current service because it will not do this automatically. And sometimes it might, but in the case that it doesn't, you have to go and select edit, translate symbols to current service, which is going to translate your symbol formats from the format of the old trading service to the format of your current trading service. One thing I will say is that every single setting that you see here in the menus, guys, all of them can be assigned, or pretty much 90% of them can be assigned to a keyboard shortcut or a custom menu button if you want. So if there's a particular setting that you wanna get, you can put it onto a button or into a keyboard shortcut. So let's go over to the chart drop down menu. Now this one has a lot of different settings, but this is anything related to, you know, the formatting of things on your chart. Okay. So the chart settings will be the first main settings window that I guess you should get accustomed with. And we'll go over a little bit of that in, a, in the future. I'll open it for now. So this is what the settings windows look like. And you can also customize the colors and you know, and all that. Uh, I've put them to be like this because I'm more of a, you know, blue and black and white type of guy. As you can see by the background, that's cool. The symbol tab, of course, is where you set your trading and uh, quoting symbols. Uh, what's cool in Sierra chart is that when you trade other products, you can have a trading symbol different from the actual symbol. So if you trade micros and you want to watch the data for the minis, you can do that like that. All right. 
Um, for now, I'm going to close the settings window because there's a lot to this. This is another window in itself. I just want to show you sort of where things are here in the menu. So again, in the chart drop down, this is pretty much all the settings related to, you know, how your chart visually appears. So this is where you set how the bars look on the chart. For example, I will change it to a candlestick. Now it has changed like that. So I selected chart graph draw types and changed it to a candlestick. Um, you can change your graphic settings. You can change if there's horizontal or vertical grid lines on the chart. Um, you can add a symbol alert for the chart. You can also open a time and sales or a market depth window for your chart here, although that can be done in file like I showed you earlier. Okay, you can access the replay chart features here through this window. This is one of the most powerful features in Sierra chart, which allows you to go back and replay the market for any day that you have the data file downloaded for. And it also allows you to replay with market depth with the actual order book that was live at the time that the chart was replaying and it replays very good and accurately. Uh, I can vouch for that because I do it quite often when I'm back testing. These next commands here are related to working with what's called an associated watch list for a chart. So for every chart you open in Sierra chart, it can have something called an associated watch list, which means you can configure a list of symbols for the chart. And then you can cycle between those symbols with a button if you wish, or you can scan through those symbols as well for a particular alert condition. So if, what you could do is you can import, you know, a list of symbols like stocks in the market. And then you can scan through those stocks for alert conditions or, you know, certain formulas to be true and all of that. Okay. So that's done with the uh, start scan and uh, enable continuous scanning features here. Okay. Now we have uh, the title bar, scroll bar stuff for our chart, as well as chart linking. Although this can be done in the chart settings, I would recommend you doing chart linking in the chart settings. A couple settings regarding futures rollover symbols and rollover dates, okay? These settings are useful, which is duplicating your chart. If you ever need to uh, duplicate a chart to another chart book or detach the chart window, which you don't really have to do, okay? Then we have the scale settings, uh, which can also be accessed by right-clicking on the price scale or the value scale on your chart. Let's say you access the scale. That's how I normally access it. Um, high chart drawings, which you can do here. And then we have go to date time. This is one of the most useful features in Sierra chart. You can type in the date time and go back to that date uh, as long as you have the day loaded on your chart. All right. And then we just have a few extra settings here regarding bar spacing and uh, going to different places in the chart. Okay, so that covers the chart drop down menu. The analysis drop down menu, this one's pretty simple. It's just anything related to custom studies or studies on the chart. So analysis studies, this is where you add indicators to your chart, um, as well as uh, programs that can operate in the form of a DLL um, that you can put onto your chart in Sierra chart. Now, before getting into custom studies or custom DLLs, you should read about how they work, of course, but normally how this is used is to add an indicator to the chart. So here are all the available indicators that you can add and each of them have their own formulas. And when you add them in, they will appear here and then you apply it and then they will appear on your chart like that. You can double click on the study there to see its input settings or subgraph settings like that. All right, that's how studies work. And we're not gonna go deep into studies here because I'm just showing you the general things, but you know, the studies aspect of Sierra chart can have, you know, an entire playlist of videos associated with it, of course, uh, covering a lot of the features like the numbers bars and volume by price and all that. And there are videos for that. You can check them out in the Sierra chart video library. Okay, so let's remove that for now. And let's go on to the tools tab. And the tools tab is anything related to drawing tools. Um, the first settings here is related to the pointer. I tend to leave it on adjust regions. And the reason is because it's kind of a complicated reason as to why I do this. Maybe I'll leave it out of the video, but it's because in one of my studies, I use something called pointer events. And if you have it set to adjust regions, it doesn't use the pointer events. And what the pointer events do when you have them enabled in a custom study is they increase the the power usage of the program just ever so slightly and I don't really want to do that. So that's why I set it to adjust regions. But normally what people do is they use the chart values crosshair like this, where you can go ahead and look at the prices of the chart. If you're doing analysis, the hand tool is for dragging across the chart. The ones that I use the most are adjust regions and chart values crosshair. So I'll leave it on adjust regions for now. Okay. Here we have all of our drawing tools that are accessible. These are all the basic drawing tools here. 
uh, and they go all the way here. One of the most powerful drawing tools in Sierra Chart that I see a lot of traders using is the draw volume profile. So you can select that and then you can click at one point until another point on the chart like that. And now I have this volume profile here that I've drawn. And what's cool is that you can adjust the, um, the length of the bars that it takes up here to see the volume profile for those bars. So in this case, I'm dragging it to there. And now we can see the volume at price for all of those bars. Okay, and I'll drag it over here and we can see the volume at price for only these bars now. Yeah, so the draw volume profile tool is very powerful. It's quite useful. Um, I also like rectangles and extending rectangles. Okay. The tool settings uh, is going to be, you know, all the settings for your drawing tools, anything regarding settings of um, automated drawing tools, as well as user drawn drawing tools is going to be done in the tool settings right there. Okay, and then moving and erasing drawings right there. Okay, spreadsheet, we'll skip over this because this is more advanced, we don't really need to do that. The trade drop down menu, of course, is where you see all of the commands for trading related things. So our trade windows are down here, trade orders window, positions window, account monitor, trade activity log, trade service log, and refreshing trade data from the service, which you shouldn't have to do unless you have a frozen order, which is very, very rare, it should never happen. Okay, so clearing recent bid ask volume, this can be all done by a hotkey, but it's good to know that you can do that. So we can turn on and off trade simulation mode, we can lock trading for our chart, now we can open up the trade window for our chart, which looks like this by default. Okay, this is where we set bracket orders and all that. Normally it's attached to the chart, but you can unattach it. Um, showing order fills in the chart is very useful if you're going back and uh, looking at historical order fill data and all that. Um, okay, these are the three main settings windows for trading, which are general trade settings, chart trade settings, and chart DOM settings. No matter if it's a DOM or a chart DOM, your chart trading settings are going to affect how you know trading is performed on your chart. So I'll just go into that menu to show you here. So there's some settings here regarding that. General, we have our working orders, which is gonna show, um, so if we submit an order, the order line here, um, what shows up here is configured here in the uh, chart trade settings, working orders, okay? So you can see I've uh, put in the uh, estimated Q position, it says there, estimated Q position 22 in this case. The general trade settings is even more settings related to just how trading is done generally in the program, like the use of server side OCO orders, which this is on by default, you don't actually have to enable that. If you're working on a service like the Teton order routing, that has server side uh, OCO and bracket orders enabled by default. That's going to cover that trading keyboard shortcuts. Uh, we're still in the trade drop down menu here, clearing trade simulation orders and data. This is uh, useful do it quite often uh, if you're testing something out. Um, okay, auto trade settings here for bar back testing. I normally do back testing with axle trading programs, uh, which is I guess the more advanced way. So I normally don't use these settings, but they have something called a bar replay back test. These are the settings that apply to that. The settings that apply to auto trading in general, if it's done through a custom study are here, auto trading enabled global and auto trading enabled chart, you can also set to disable those on startup, which of course, I'm a crazy person, I don't want to disable auto trading, because I'm, I'm an auto trading beast, of course, you guys know that by now. So go to next chart fill in previous. So then these settings are useful if you're going back and looking at previous chart order fills. So you can cycle between your order fills on the chart with these two settings very useful. Global trade positions window, it's kind of similar to the trade positions window. And again, these windows down here are very important, like the trade orders window to see your open orders, trade positions window, as well as the trade account monitor, and of course the trade activity log to see your historical trades. Okay, we're doing pretty well here, guys. We're getting through it. Global settings, there's also a lot going on here. So general settings is things related to the GUI. I'll go into the menu just to show you here. Things related to the behavior of the user interface um, for the charts and the settings windows. Um, general settings like the chart update interval generally uh, for all your charts, but you can override that for individual charts if you like. So the update interval, how fast, how often does the chart update? You can only set this as low as 10, which is 10 milliseconds, which is I believe 100 times per second. I don't think a human can react that fast. A machine can, but a human cannot. So you can decide how low you want to set this. 14 is an extremely low interval. Now keep in mind, the chart update interval, when it's set here in the general settings, now this is going to affect all of the charts that you have open in your current instance of Sierra chart, 
except for the ones that you've configured a custom update interval because you can override this update interval in the actual chart settings for your individual charts. Although I wouldn't recommend doing that because it just makes things too complicated. Whereas you have different chart update intervals for different charts. However, you could do this. For example, let's say you have a chart book where you have a historical chart as well as a trading DOM. You want the trading DOM to update fast. So you set the chart update interval to 20 or as low as 10. And then for the historical chart, you don't need those fast updates. So you can set it higher like 100 or more than that. You can also change the chart update interval for the quote board. And this applies only to the quote board. Open files on startup. This is quite important if you don't want to have to open chart books every single time you open Sierra chart. So you first have to select yes, and then you select the files to open on startup. And it's going to give you this little dialog box here where you can go ahead and add in the files of which ones you want to open on startup. Okay, and then they will all appear here. In this case, I have this chart book set to open on startup. Keep in mind that the more chart books you open on startup, it might take a little bit longer to start up because it has to load all of the charts. Okay. Now instances to run on startup is important if you work with a setup where you have multiple instances. Now I don't remember if you need to write comma separated like one, two, three, meaning instance one, instance two, instance three, or you actually just write the number of instances. You can refer to the documentation for that. But anyway, it's not a big deal. You can always go to file new instance, which is pretty easy. Next, we'll go over to GUI, which I guess will be the graphics settings here for the for Sierra chart the scroll multiplier and the scroll wheel setting. You can configure what the scroll wheel does in Sierra chart. So the scroll multiplier here is only going to apply to some of the settings. So in this case, I have this configuration set, which uh, scroll wheel scrolls the vertical scale of the chart. And when I hold shift and scroll, then it scrolls the chart. So I'll click on the chart and hold shift. And you can see it'll scroll through the chart like that. The higher you set the scroll multiplier, the faster it's going to scroll through your chart. Okay. Custom title bar name, this is you can actually change the top title bar name at the top. So if you just type in something there and apply it, it'll change the top left title bar from Sierra chart to something else. Uh, but I prefer not to do that. I prefer to leave it as Sierra chart because it keeps me reminded of, you know, the software that I'm using and all that. That's pretty much it for the GUI settings. But there is some additional settings here in the application GUI, which are, are pretty specific things like display save all option on exit and destroy chart windows when they're hidden. Let's go over to the charts tab. And here there's going to be some settings regarding your charts. This one will apply to trading US treasuries display fractions in short format. So if you have any markets that you trade that have uh, fractional prices, this setting might be of interest to you. So sometimes if you're running custom studies, it'll show the input settings of the study on your chart, and you might want to turn that off here. Okay, let's go over to settings windows. And this is going to configure the behavior of the settings windows in Sierra chart. Um, this will be important if you do a lot of work with the settings windows, and you want to configure, you know, the user interface to operate a little bit differently. If I go ahead and change this setting, which is select all text and edit control upon editing, if I change it to yes, now watch what happens when I go to the chart settings window, and I click on the symbol value, you can see that it highlights the entire value like that. So that way I could just start typing in a new symbol if I wanted to. So that's up to you if you if you want to add that. It's an interesting feature. There's a lot of customization. Basically, this is just a way to customize the user experience, which is cool. Um, log, paths, and alerts. These are alert settings right here. The alert settings is useful. Uh, it's very important, actually. Um, you can change the sound for each one of the alerts. So in Sierra chart, you have up to 200 different alerts that you can configure. And they're all going to be configured here in this window right here. So you select, you can put in the sound uh, for that particular alert. So in this case, alert one is set to the cache register dot wave file, which is a default uh, sound file that comes with Sierra chart, I believe, but you can also, of course, set your own custom sounds here if you want. Okay, um, number of times to play the alert. In this case, I put it as zero, but it should be one technically. Um, and then there's some settings regarding email alerts and SMS, which we'll not talk about here. Okay, so that's going to cut it for the general settings window. Lots going on here in global settings. So again, we can access our tool settings, which we can also access through the tools menu. Okay, sometimes it's confusing that you can access the same settings window from two different places, like for example, global settings, data trade service settings, we can also access that through file data trade service settings. So symbol settings is important for configuring things like commission symbols. Um, or anything regarding 
how the data is processed on a symbol. Although this is quite an advanced menu, so we're not gonna go over it right now. Um, customizing chart header. The chart header is what displays here at the top of your chart. You can customize that if you want. So this will show the symbol, the time frame, um, high, low, open, close, and things like that. Um, that's where you customize it right here. Chart, customize chart header. Customize chart shortcut menu is when you right click on your chart, you'll see a menu and you can customize every item that's in that menu here, as well as the customize chart trade menu. So I'll right click on the chart and we see first the chart trade menu, which I've disabled most of the options, as well as the chart shortcut menu, again, which I've disabled most of the options and put only these ones. Download market depth data, as well as delete and download data, which I should probably get rid of because I normally don't delete data. And study settings here, in this case, there's no studies on the chart, so we can't see that. The next one you'll probably want to use quite often is customize keyboard shortcuts. And like I said earlier, you can put a shortcut to any item in the entire software. So you can see all the menus right here, file, edit, chart analysis, etc. So all the settings or all of the uh, commands that we saw in those menus can be set to a hotkey, which is pretty good, pretty fast, pretty awesome. Okay, going on to the right side here. Again, these four are the trading related settings. And again, these three settings or these four settings also appear when you go to trade. You can see they appear right there. I forgot one thing, which is regarding the chart DOM uh, configuration. That's done here. Okay, through these settings, chart trade mode on, chart trading DOM on, and show market data columns. In the case that you wanna show those columns without enabling trading, you do it through show market data columns. Okay, so still in global settings, guys. Going down, um, we have our graphic settings configurations, which you can save multiple of those, although these are global graphics configurations. A general rule of thumb is that when it comes to configuring your graphics chart settings, I would recommend doing it in the global settings. That way the settings you configure will apply to all your charts. The way this is changed is for each one of your charts, you go to chart, graphic settings chart. Now, in some cases, when people send you chart books, they're gonna have this disabled right here, which is use global graphic settings instead of these settings, which means that they want to use a custom configuration that they set here for all the colors. Um, and what this does is it's just very problematic for most people because you have to go in and let's say you wanna copy the color configuration done here, you have to go ahead and copy that into your global settings afterwards. So what I recommend to most people is I just set this to global graphics so that it will go to whatever you have configured in your global graphics settings and you don't have to worry about configuring graphics for individual charts, although you can do it uh, in the menu I just showed you. The next and final settings windows here, well, I guess the one that is most important here is the CR chart server settings. So I'll click on that and this is where we set things related to the DTC protocol server, which is a way to connect programmatically to Sierra chart. Although there are some rules regarding that, you can't really pull live data out of the DTC protocol server. Um, at least you can't pull CME data, there's rules regarding that. Um, some of the things you can, okay. So the general settings here is related to the data feeds you get from Sierra chart. So in this case, you can configure the maximum amount of market depth levels you get from the data feed. Uh, you can say, I don't want more than 20 levels. It's not gonna give you more than 20. Um, if you set this, you can set this to 100 or 1000. It'll just give you the most that it can give you, uh, which is normally a lot. I think they give the entire order book there, uh, but I don't need that. But most traders probably don't need the whole order book. So you'll set that to be whatever amount you want. Um, just know that this setting right here in the server settings is going to override every other setting regarding the market depth levels because this is where it starts from. It starts from their server, right? These two settings are regarding market by order data, which is supported with their Denali data feed for the Chicago exchanges as well as a NASDAQ data feed. Okay, the last menu here is the window menu, which is anything regarding to creating a custom layout of charts, which is quite useful. So you can tile your charts vertically and horizontally automatically here with these settings, or you can set a custom amount of columns and rows and use these two settings to configure those. And the way you set the number of columns and rows is done in the global settings, general settings, and then I believe it is windows right here. So 
window tiling right here in this case, two rows, two columns, and use windows, custom grid layout. You set those the way you want, and then when you use window, tile as grid horizontally or vertically, it's gonna use the number of columns and rows that you have set, okay? And the way you change which charts appear first is here at the bottom, windows and chart books, and you have to change the order of the charts here. So when you hit the command for tile the charts vertically or horizontally as a grid, it'll put them in the order that you set there. So there's a few more settings regarding the window and all that. Um, these ones right here are important, like chart values window, tools values window, or current quote window. I would recommend using those if you wanna see information about the current market that you're trading. For example, the uh, chart values window right there, okay? Current amount of volume, open high, low, close, etc or the current quote window, which will show you the, uh, you know, the bid and ask and all that, which is useful if you're looking at real-time data and trying to compare something, okay. Um, the help menu will bring you to a bunch of their different web pages from the Sierra Chart website. Thank you for watching. This was a basic overview of all of the menu items in Sierra Chart. If you have any questions, leave them below. I'll try to answer when I have time. Thank you for watching. Click on this video to see more awesome content and click on this playlist to watch more Sierra Chart videos. Thank you.